I remember when I was addicted to morphine. You were never addicted to morphine, that Joe. Was so much. Joe, fun. you couldn't afford to be addicted to morphine. <laughs> That's so true, though. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Coleman, too. Can you not? I don't remember how to say can you not in German, but I remember how to say welcome. I was like, what did he say? <laughs> I got you. Hold on. Are you ready? Können Sie nicht. Willkommen. Können Sie nicht. Können Sie nicht. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Können Sie nicht. Nicht. Our favorite... Podcast Let's make that show. the cover up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll do translation. I wonder if podcast has ever done that, have translation done. That would be so weird. Unless it was like something super scripted. But, yeah, oh imagine... man, look at this German translation of the word podcast. Oh, podcast. <laughs> imagine if we did have like a dubbed version. Like if we had a Spanish version of Can You Not. Okay. The translators were just actively talking on top of us. Like... That sounds like a migraine, honestly. <laughs> Maybe anyway. if it was a visual episode, that'd be pretty fun. Anyway, we're back, and we're better than ever, aren't we, champs? Yeah. What did you just call me? <laughs> Champ. Don't call me that. Isn't that a like? Isn't that a great one? No one ever brings that out anymore. That's not my name. When's the last time you got called a champ? That sounds so triumphant, doesn't it? Like you're a champ. The eye, of, the eye of the tiger. You're a champion. Yeah. Anyway, our topic today, as chosen by Brian, oh, is listening, Brian. Brian. It is daytime television. Yeah, yeah. Which Amber was a guest at because she doesn't have it. <gasps> I haven't watch watched television. TV in like five years. Same here. And I've never watched daytime television ever. <laughs> I recently finished this uh, series. You all may have heard of it. It is the strange the- thing about the Johnson. No. That's a, oh, sh- that's a movie. That is a movie. <laughs> but don't watch that. But do watch <laughs> The People vs. O.J. Simpson, oh, An American good. Crime Story. That was a very good series. And it sparked a conversation with me and my parents after they informed me that it was very realistic and it like took them back in a time machine to the year that the three of us were born. Uh-huh. Oh. Except Amber is actually older than the both of us. You're right. right. What You're up? Right. Well, the two of us. Yeah. Well, technically her too, but long story short. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess We so. got <laughs> on to the topic of shows about judges because they informed me that um, the judge in the trial ended up being very famous and very popular. And uh, a lot of these shows like Judge Judy, mm-hmm. maybe not Judge Judy specifically, but like the, those kinds of shows kind of were inspired by that the fame mm-hmm. that came from that trial Guess and I never the judge that. that's interesting yeah so i just wanted to know why shows like judge judy and even somewhat like jerry springer judge and joe brown judge joe brown you know like shows like that where it's reality tv but it's not like like the reality TV where it's like the Kardashians. Like we know that people watch those types of shows just for like like they these are people that have money and you can look up to as kind of, not really a role model obviously, but you know, I want to live their popular lives. That's true. Versus is my role model. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Versus, like, shows where it's just talking about literally, like, everyday people's real drama. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> I just Google a lot of people watch Judge Judy. <laughs> that's exactly... So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and... I got a bunch of articles mainly about why people like Jerry Springer and... That's not Judge Judy. I know. <laughs> but they connected the two like I did. So <laughs> he just judges your DNA. Yeah. But it basically said that people watch those shows because it makes them feel better about their own life. So it's weird that like other reality T V shows make you wanna live those lives and mm-hmm. these reality T V shows make you feel better about your own life. Yeah. I feel like people like watching other people squirm. Yeah. So, like, when you get, uh, 
just the, the judge shows. And I thought of Dr. Phil, too, just now. Yeah. Dr. Um, Phil. Because, like, Catch it could be, outside. yeah, like, watching people, like, dealing with that and how, how uncomfortable it is. <laughs> I feel like people, like, take enjoyment out of watching them suffer. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, it's so easy because you just turn on the TV and, I don't know, it's easy to feel better than them. Yeah. yeah. I would argue that a lot of other reality shows are also about feeling superior. Like, I don't think people watch things like The Real World and... In Jersey Shore when it was on because they feel like I want to be them so bad. I think they're like, haha. Well, if you want to party all the time and like drink <laughs> yeah. and eat damn near for free, they worked at like a, a I don't even know, like a clothing store, like mm. a dumb little clothing yeah. store on Jersey Shore. <laughs> and they got to live in this awesome house yeah. and party every day. Yeah. Right. I'll also say, I think one pe- reason that people love courtroom shows is because. People love the idea of a courtroom. You know, there's this, mm-hmm. there's, there's the good guy or the bad guy in your head, or some, or whatever. The defense and the opponent. You know, like it's black and white. It's this or this. Who is going to win? Someone has to win. Right. Someone's you know? right. Someone's wrong. And that's why you see movies. You know, based upon that kind of thing all the time. Mm-hmm. But then people don't actually like if you actually have been in a courtroom. It's not that that interesting. Yeah, it, it's definitely interesting to a certain extent, but it's not like this quick paced drama. Bring the person to the you know, like it's like. I mean, that's what, that was one of the things about the OJ trial where it really was that interesting. Pretty intense, you know yeah. what I mean? It was pretty intense. So then, like, I, I think a TV show you can get all that excitement of of the courtroom or the the romanticizing of the courtroom in a quick. 20 minutes you know right and it'd be real life things too like i mean obviously it's not like criminal stuff but yeah and it doesn't have any legal weight any of those no at least not i I think some of them might but it's not like uh i don't know how to explain it like it's it's usually like a civil civil suits type thing not like a actual you're going to jail (laughs) type thing yeah what did you find, Amber? Why did people watch Judge Judy? Oh, well, I was looking. I was trying to find demographics, um, because I was just wondering if the same people who like Judge Judy like Jersey Shore. Uh, I don't. I don't have enough time right now to find it because, <laughs> well, um, because I was thinking like you were talking about how much people love the courtroom. I was. I was wondering if it was like, if there was an economic difference or mm. like an age difference or mm. a racial difference between the people who watch those things because I feel like, I, I just I feel like maybe. Like, there are people who like reality TV, but don't want to admit it, so they watch Judge Judy. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's it's a it's lot, like, like you know, <laughs> Jersey Shore is just so ratchet, and, like... It is. You know, I feel like there's some people who aren't, who aren't down to watch the ratchet, so instead right. they watch Judge Judy, you know, um, and I was just kind of curious about that. But I, I, um, I was able to find that, like, 75% of the people watch Judge Judy are women, and that's about it. Um, <laughs> this is something that's interesting. According to Wikipedia... The genre began in radio broadcasting in the 1930s and moved to television in the 1940s. I didn't know they had court shows right. in the 1940s. Apparently there's one called Court of Current Issues, one called Your Witness, and also Famous Jury Trials. Um, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Um, but it does say by the late 1990s it had taken over quite a bit with the technique of choice continuing into the present and the oj trial took place in 1995 right 94 95 here's a semi answer to your question amber it says the genre's most formidable competitors in syndication have been the sitcom and the game show genres well that's those are that's just other daytime tv yeah we're talking about is jersey shore a daytime tv no oh but i'm just talking about like if but if that's what because syndic- the syndicates have to go with where the money is being held. Yeah. And if, I mean, like, I think it's kind of like a Judge Judy and like the court shows and Jerry Springer are like the daytime reality, and then there's like the nighttime reality TV where it's like the Kardashians mm-hmm. and the yeah, a little more high yeah. Because because um, one of the things that I found just like looking around is that th- that what is still the majority of the daytime TV viewership is women. It's usually yeah. middle aged women. It's yeah. women who stay at home. Um, and don't don't go to work. So like, uh, I don't know. I am aware of that. It also says while all syndicated shows are steadily losing audiences, court shows have had the slowest rate of viewer erosion. Mm-hmm. And for a while, their court shows equaled the number of talk shows and also beat out uh, 
uh, reality television. Man, I hate office. talk shows. Every time I go to the <laughs> dentist, my dentist just like got a new office on the first floor of his building, mm -hmm. and he has a huge TV in the lobby, and it's so loud, so I can't read when I'm sitting there. Right. And then he also has a TV in every in front of every dentist chair, so like it must be cool for people who like it. But God, I hate that <laughs> house remodeling show. is so annoying. <laughs> like I, I didn't even know it was Valentine's Day, and I went in to get something done, and like I was like, no wonder everybody hates Valentine's Day. Like they won't stop talking. Talking about it, like God, this is terrible. Like, I hated it. I guess they have to find a way for people to distract themselves from, like, oh God, I have to get a root canal. Oh God, like, you know, that kind of stuff. No, that's what I was doing basically. But like, <laughs> God, I, I hate it. It was worse than the root canal. It was so much. I was so happy when he came in. He's like, okay, I'm gonna put your chair back. And I was like, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Like, this yeah. has been awful. The one thing I'm always shocked by, when, like, when I go over to my parents' house or something like that, and I see the TVs on. Is I just forget how much advertising there is. Right. Yeah. Bombard you. I mean, like sometimes I get frustrated, like oh, another YouTube ad or another Spotify ad. But it's always the same stuff, like over and over again. And... Yeah. But it seems like but that's it's... kind of an American thing. Like when I was in Quebec, they did not do it the same way. Oh, like really? you would watch the whole show, oh, okay. and then at the end of the show, there'd be like two or three ads. Oh man. Then another that's whole nice. show. Uh, and it's like two or three ads. I mean, huh. the main advertising is like if you drive into the city, there's a billion billboards right. or signs or whatever. Hmm. Well, it just goes to tell you it's a, the warning sign of a dying medium when you have to overload it with advertising just to keep it afloat, you know? Yeah. So, whatever I'm, I mean, uh, the equivalent of that for us is like HBO where they show a whole movie and then they put the ads. Or like PBS, where you think it's a commercial, so you sit and watch for 20 minutes until you realize it's just a telethon, <laughs> and you wonder what you've been doing this whole time. <laughs> and I've learned so it. much about this mop. <laughs> I don't know anything about television, so I googled daytime TV. You googled what is a television. Well, I know that. I know what, that's what my Netflix goes on. Um, <laughs> that's what the Wii plugs into. But, uh, so I was reading that, and then I was suddenly reading about soap operas. Like, I've never watched a soap opera before. You stole my time. Good! <laughs> Glad I went first. Uh, so, um, I've never watched a soap opera before, but I remember my old babysitter used to, like, drag out this tiny, tiny little, like, smaller than my computer screen, <laughs> black and white TV, and set it up in the garage when we were all outside, and she'd watch soap operas on it. So... Uh, I was talking to somebody today, and I was like, I don't know what I want to talk about. And they were like, well, I wonder what it must be like to run an episode every day of the same show for, like, 50 years. And I was like, oh, my God, I never thought about it. <laughs> so I, like, I Googled it. And I literally just Googled, like, what it's really like to work on a soap opera. And uh, it's, like, it's, it's Katie, Katie McLean. I don't – she's on shows. I don't – it was an interview with her. And – um it was, it was actually a really, really interesting article because uh, they record their episodes, like, really far in advance. But mm. um, one of the things that she said is that, like, she's been told that you have to lose five pounds, like, because it's, like, a visual thing. And it's about, mm. it's supposed to be about pretty people and, like, that kind of stuff. So, like, it's, there's all this, like, um, emphasis. Society standards of pretty people. Right. It's all this emphasis about how you look. And, like... She's just talking about how soap operas are always made fun of, but it's really, really hard to go in and work that long um, if the, as the same character, like, day in and day out and day in and day out. In a different article, they were talking about how, like, sometimes you can be there from, like, 7.30 in the morning to 7 at night. Um, sometimes you can film multiple episodes a day. Sometimes an episode takes, like, weeks and you can't get it right. And um, another interesting thing that I guess is where I'll leave it off is that... Um, this person says, I'm going to read from the article, soap opera actors are not respected enough because in general we do not respect the middle class in our country enough. We have a thing about being middle class. It's not just cool enough or something. Soap operas at their core are about normal middle class people striving to have a better life. What they learn along the way is that their hometown is really where they want to be and their family is whom they really want to be with. So, um... I thought that was interesting, because I've always thought soap operas were stupid. I've never watched them. I just yeah, kind of made an assumption, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, it, it's a very much more of a nine to five kind of job. You know, you learn a script mm -hmm. in extremely brief amount of time. It's just handed to you. Right. You're like, 
like okay, I guess this is where my character's going now. <laughs> like, you know, right, that was one of the things that they talked about in the article was like how some people are really good at learning lines and they just learn them like immediately, but then like there are other people who like this person has to like sit in their dressing room and go through and go through and go through everything because you don't get a teleprompter or cue cards or anything. Like you just kind of have to know it. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I, especially growing up, I always made fun of soap operas too. You know, you flip through and you see these melodramatic tears and close-ups and cheap sets and stuff like that. But I, I'm a pretty big defender of the soap opera. That's what I was going to talk about for my topic. Because uh, there's a lot of really interesting things when you actually start looking into it. Uh, first of all, they were the first things on television that were like run by women. Like, mm. it was the first time women were allowed to write for television and direct and even create and run a television show as a whole. And I'm sure their main demographic is women, too. Yeah, especially back, back in the day. Yeah, you know, in definitely. The, in the radio serials and even into the 50s and 60s, especially, like, their main target was women writing for women. Mm-hmm. So, like, <clears throat> it was a really big deal, even if it wasn't, like, always considered high art or something like that. <clears throat> But another cool thing, too, is that, like, because it was just kind of, like, slipped in under everyone's, you know, radar, and because they had to constantly try to surprise the audience and keep them coming back five days a week, they would introduce a lot of controversial topics. So, like, soap operas were the first ones to talk about the Vietnam War. They were the first Mm. ones to talk about abortions on television. They were the first shows, amongst the first shows to feature gay relationships and to feature transgender characters. Like, they were, maybe at first they had to do a little bit just because of shock value, but some of them treated this subject with, like, really, actually a surprising amount of sensitivity, considering that, like, 99% 99% of people were not okay with that stuff back in the 70s and all that, you know? So, like, in a way, like, it was, like, this little fostering ground to see how far you could get away with Testing talking about taboo topics. Yeah. And, of course, it kind of fell through by the time, like, the late 90s came around. Nothing was as taboo anymore. So that's when... and ratings were starting to drop so that's when the soap opera like was desperately trying and i think that's especially where people started making fun of it even more so because that's when they came up with storylines about like oh the sperm got switched at birth and oh no this guy came back from the dead and like they they couldn't they (laughs) literally like everyone had caught up to all the taboo topics so they had to come up with just completely dumbassery just in order to get people's attention anymore, which I thought was kind of interesting. And now you don't really see soap operas as much. And the ones that are around, like a couple of them tried going to web only version and that didn't really work, but there's still, there's still one or two that have been around since like the sixties or seventies that are still slowly going on. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. The one thing that I always noticed about soap operas is the length. Like, they just keep going and going and going. And it almost felt like they never had, like, a season end. Oh, like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was they just... Didn't in a way. Yeah, I mean, they didn't, like, in the sense that, like, the cliffhanger was at the end of the week. You know what I mean? On Friday, there was your cliffhanger. Now you're waiting till Monday. And now it's like Monday is a new season. Right. You know what I mean? Instead of it being, like, Oh, okay, we're going to run through the fall. And then at the end of the fall, we'll leave them with a huge cliffhanger until right. the next fall, you know? Well, that was another big deal, too, is soap operas were some of the first shows that were serialized. Because mm-hmm. a lot of shows back in the day were just like sitcoms where everything would reset in the next episode. Nothing ever changed. It was always the same. Or like, <clears throat> you know, like a lot of family shows and stuff like that where it was very similar. Nothing ever changed. But it, now we see serialized shows everywhere like it's almost become the norm now like a a super critically acclaimed show is almost certainly going to be some sort of like continuing storyline rather than just great anatomy yeah instead of like here's a bunch of characters and here's the situations they get into well i feel like almost every single show that you are and i don't it might have always been like this but a lot of shows that you watch even like you know kids cartoons like you can watch them separate but like 
there's a chronology to it. Like, yeah, things happen, yeah. and, like, I don't know. When I was a kid and I was watching stuff, I'm thinking of Teen Titans right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I just kind of figured out, okay, like, I, they didn't show them in order, but it's like, okay, I know where we are right now, right. like, in this timeline. because right. Just because of the characters and what was going on. So I feel like that, that might have come from that, because, I, I don't know, like, Cat Doc didn't have anything like that or something, <laughs> yeah. you know? But, um... SpongeBob. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. it didn't matter. Yeah, every but, day's exact, you know, nothing really changes. Yeah. Start over. But it's, but it's, <laughs> but, like, I... That that sort of like the chronology has worked its way into like cause Steven Universe shows right now and like Adventure oh, Time yeah. has a chronology mm-hmm. to it and all that other stuff. So right, yeah, yeah and that, Young I, Justice like that's that was a cartoon like a second ago. I don't know. I watch it, but um, <laughs> like it's that's something you watch in order. Like there's an order. Even right. somewhat like the Phineas and Ferb. Like even if you did like you didn't really have to watch episode to episode mm-hmm. but they like referred to things that would happen in the past yeah like, a little just kind of an like order that. to it yeah so i mean that didn't really become a thing until like the late 80s for shows to like have a continuation like that except for the soap opera which had been doing it since forever it was just like in a way imitating real life because in real life, you don't have, like, an end. You know, things don't right. just reset at the end of the day. Life just keeps on going on, and you have more challenges, and it just always What's keeps on new? going What's um, new? Unrelated fun fact. Did mm-hmm. you know that they're called soap operas? Because when they first started, um, like, the soap opera was um, originally started as a radio show. Like, they were just radio shows that were these um, melodramatic things. And they were always... Um, sponsored by soap companies yeah. like so that's why they're called soap operas is literally just because of the sponsorship so i thought that was kind of cool maybe we should be called the uh the warby parker podcast then i'm beginning to think or the uh advanced auto parts podcast the, the, the bark box <laughs> bark, bark, bark box <laughs> the surrealist bark box schrodinger's bark box the box opera uh, Ooh, the box opera uh, that actually sounds really uh, cool Oh, the box. Actually, that sounds that sounds like some kind of sounds like my next band scene. name. <laughs> <laughs> I am the box opera, and then there's like an organ. Like, dun, 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 like. <laughs> be magical. It's, it's, like, it's like the Phantom of the Opera, but it's just Amber at this giant organ, <laughs> like just mashing keys. <laughs> <laughs> um, Somehow it's coming out. Like it's definitely recording, but you're watching me anyway for some reason. I want to have the Daft Punk mask on while I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Warby Parker, <clears throat> actually, this is the best segue we've ever had into the sponsorship. Ad. You actually brought it up during <laughs> the conversation. I was hoping, uh, in keeping in line with our recent thing, we could have a little bit of an improv situation. Oh, improv the Parker. So, um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, my. In this situation, am I the glasses? You are a very successful businessman. Oh. You have a penthouse. You have. Um, Why isn't it pronounced man. penthouse? Penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered that. You have a penthouse. You have twenty-eight bathrooms. That's how twenty-eight big. bathrooms. Yeah, that's how big this penthouse is. In a is. penthouse. <laughs> Penthouse. You you <laughs> twenty eight bathrooms in my penthouse. You, you don't want to know how many bathrooms it has. Um, you just but, said twenty eight. I mean, uh, <laughs> bedrooms. <aren't. laughs> um, you don't. You don't get. You don't want to know how many bathrooms it has. Twenty eight. <laughs> When you have 28 bathrooms, you don't get a bedroom. You have to, like, choose the bathroom you're going to sleep in that night. You have to throw the mattress in the bathroom. Whichever one has the biggest tub. What if one of your ba- What if one of your bathrooms has a fold-out mattress that folds out of the shower and you're sleeping in the bathtub? Joe, you mattress. have to sleep in the half bath. <laughs> he has to sleep in the upright shower. <laughs> Meanwhile, Amber is your ailing mother. What? Who lives with you in this fancy penthouse. And both of your eyesight is failing. Mother, rapidly. come out of your bathroom. Don't call me that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the Warby Parker employee. Who I assume you're going to be the dog. You give them a the call. dog. <laughs> <laughs> this is our dog, Joe. <laughs> so begin with that I have 2020 vision. <laughs> no, that's not in your character. Oh. You have ailing vision along with I your poop sight. in a different room every day of the month! <laughs> <laughs> Except for those last two. Yeah, it's February right now. Oh, oh, you're right. What do you say, Brian? 
What do I say? Mm-hmm. I say, hey, Jesse. Hey, Jesse. <laughs> oh, hey, Gregor. <laughs> Hi. I say, I don't know. What do I say? Man? I'm really glad they're here for this. So you're yeah. going to have to have a situation where you call the work. Apparently, partner. I have 28 bathrooms. And apparently, and I'm Brian's mom. Yep. With ailing vision. <laughs> but I can see there are no bedrooms in the penthouse. So I don't the really. The penthouse. Just bathrooms, 28 of them. Wait, why are we calling and penthouse penthouse? Because I don't understand why it's not pronounced penthouse. Because there's a Is this a white thing with like tour and tour? No, nobody says penthouse. Tour. I, I said it. Say no, 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 no. I said it as tour. a joke. Nobody says penthouse. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're improvising a Warby Parker ad. Can you just do the ad? This isn't going to go anywhere. If you want to try it out for your. For you or your ailing mother, <laughs> you, you can have them send five pairs of glasses. Three for her, two for me. All right. <laughs> I need 28. Actually. Let's hope you have the same prescription. Uh, you can have them send five pairs to your doorstep or your penthouse. And uh, you can try them on. And you choose the one you want. And you buy that one, you send the other ones back. It's super easy because you don't have to actually go in a, in a store or anything. I have a question. It's brilliant. Will yeah. they send me 28 pairs so I can have one for each bathroom? Um, oh, one pair for each bathroom. The, the trial that we're offering, if you go to warbyparkertrial.com slash can you not, is only for five pairs, but I'm sure... So, do the math, Joe. How many times <laughs> How do many we have to jobs? use the free trial <laughs> to get one <laughs> pair per bathroom? But aren't you supposed to send them back? Yeah, you have to send them back out. Oh, no. So how many people do we Unless need to do the trial? Up. They're just that good that you might want to try and buy I need 28, 28 pairs. pairs. What's 28 times 5? That's how many of these <laughs> things I need to do. <laughs> oh. But their, their specialty is these kind of like, kind of semi-retro hipster glasses. So As an old lady with 28 bathrooms, that sounds yeah, perfect. Yeah, you're going to love it. So, <laughs> once retro again... Retro hipster. <laughs> once again... Sounds like 28 bathrooms to me. <laughs> once again, that's uh, warbyparkertrial.com I really, slash can you not. I really wish that the code was like penthouse. <laughs> Okay, so anyway. I thought I'd abruptly switch my topic to talk about uh, how much longer TV has, or if it does have an expiration date, because I think the way things are heading, I think there will be a certain point where it plateaus and coexists, just like how people were so upset about ebooks. oh, it's going to kill the actual book, and once it got to a certain point, once it got to like 15-20% of all book sales, it kind of just plateaued, and they've just been kind of sharing the space. So what but, is it coexisting with the internet? Yeah, because and Netflix. Yeah, because oh, so Netflix. many people, especially our age, are cutting the cord and only having you know, like, if you have like a computer, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Netflix pirating Hulu sites that I won't right. name, <laughs> um, Amazon no, Prime, HBO Go, like people can just get all these things. But over time, I almost wonder too, like, will you just getting like. 12 different streaming services be essentially as the same price as if you were just getting a bunch cable. of cable channels that you probably wouldn't. So, yeah, I don't but know. I don't see everything shifting in that direction. So, like, there's not going to be every single sh- show on there. You know what I mean? Like, on the show. I feel like every single show is available to stream in some capacity. You might have, there might be a paywall for it, but I yeah. feel like every, every major network and every cable station. I don't know. You know. I feel like maybe not like a, local channels. I don't. I don't see it as an old fashioned thing to turn on the TV yet. So I don't see it fading. I feel like that plateau may be a thing. Mm. I'm trying to find statistics, um, <laughs> because like I don't. If, if TV disappeared, I wouldn't notice. <laughs> so. But I feel like you don't do a lot of streaming. Yes, I do. You do? Yeah, I'm watching BoJack Horseman for like the third time in a row. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I love well, that show. It's so good. And I think a big turning point too is once, uh, once streamed shows and solely streamed shows started becoming super popular, people because for a while, like it was a, like a, a purely online show would never like take off. 
You know, you had like certain and now people. orange is the new black. Yeah, yeah. Well, orange is the Bojack. New black. Bojack. Bojack Horseman. Well you have there Stranger Things. Of, people are talking about these shows. Things. Okay, I just set, found this thing. It's on the New York Times. It says Americans ages 12 to 34 are spending less time in front of the TV, even as those 35 and older are spending more. So. Oh wait, so 35 and older are spending more time in front of the TV? Yeah. Um, and that says, the divide along a demographic line reveals the effect of internet videos, social networks, mobile phones, and video games. Mm. So all the alternative um, to television are, like, they have more sway on the people who use them regularly than the right. TV does. So. I think it's interesting when you read, though, because, you know, like, way back in the day when there were, like, three channels or whatever, um, it's interesting how you read about certain television events that got, like, way, 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 way more viewers than any televised thing will get today. You know, like, you look Because there at, wasn't anything else to do. Yeah, like the exactly. OG because trial. there were only so many ch- options. But that's just because because there are so many circle. options and they're spread out. Uh, <laughs> there's so many options now and they're so spread out that everyone has their own little area that they take on as their own. You know, no one's, no one's going to the main... Uh, the main three channels, you know, and, and there's like, obviously, ABC, NBC, CBS still have huge audiences and can still like when the Super Bowl comes around that gets like huge numbers, but it's not like everyone tunes into the same thing anymore. You have so many more options. You don't have to, you know. Yeah, I feel like, uh, I don't know. What wouldn't surprise me is if, um, I don't think the 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 conventional TV like the way it is now will go away, but uh, what if it like merges to be kind of like how you can, you know, you can add Netflix, you can add the Netflix app to your Wii, so you can add like um, this channel, you know, and I feel like that's already a thing, but it mm-hmm. might just, uh, I feel like it could integrate like yeah. together, so it won't completely go away, but it'll become like a thing you can add. Just because, I don't know, I think Netflix is way better. I, yeah. I would much rather watch something online. And I, I, we, can, we don't have cable. We can't afford it. So. Yeah, same. I'm actually, I'm actually absolutely shocked that Netflix has not added video advertising to their things. It would be so easy for them to have like a pre-roll or two or three pre-roll ads before. Well, that's because you have to pay for Netflix to so use it. Yeah, but even so, like now they have an enormous budgeted television shows. They have their own production house now. They yeah. Have, so like... It's, they have it a can't lot, be. Of TV, like a lot of shows, just right. Netflix shows. It can't be cheap to produce those shows, you know, 28 shows or whatever they have. Um, so, like, I really give them a lot of kudos. Every now and then they'll raise up the price of Netflix to, like, a dollar or whatever. Like, that's fine, honestly. I think it's still dirt cheap, even if it was twice as, you know, for what you're getting, the actual quality of it, I, I think paying twice as much would still be, you know totally worth it you know i'm not saying they should do that so don't listen to me netflix but (laughs) um but i think it's still it does say a lot and i i really really appreciate that as a netflix user that they haven't spammed their entire you know thing with advertising all over the place you know yeah i don't know tv's stupid which is hard to do in the modern age to not have it. I mean, that's, that's what YouTube had to do, you know, in order to stay afloat. YouTube still technically does not make a profit at the end of each year. Google takes a hit on YouTube every year. I don't like they, YouTube very much They either. have to pay all the legal fees and music now fees. Now they're trying and... this whole YouTube Red thing, too. Mm-hmm. And I'm they have, like, YouTube-specific shows. Yeah. I wish with YouTube, I wish that they would either let you skip the ad or don't let you instead of doing this intermingle stuff because, mm. like... It's confusing and irritating. Yeah, I you're like, oh, I'm gonna get to skip it. No, it's one of those non skip And even ones. on YouTube, I don't really use YouTube for videos. I use it when I want to listen through an album at work because I don't, I can't put Spotify on my computer in a way that's functional. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, admin access and campus uh, computers and really bad campus computers. <laughs> so, um, I just end up using it for albums because you can search an artist and then like click their album and just listen through the album. That's pretty cool. Spotify has a uh, website streaming thing you can get It doesn't. To it, the computer's too slow. Oh. I gotcha. Yeah, I mean, before Spotify, I that's what I used YouTube for too. And, and, yeah. and the vast majority of YouTube is comprised of music. Uh, in fact, that's their top thing. And the second biggest thing is gaming. <laughs> so that's why you see the, like, the top... 
the top most subscribed YouTube channels for the most part are usually music channels. You know, those are the ones that make all the money. And that's the way they can actually support the site is through honestly music videos and gaming videos. Yeah. The rest is all and like of course Poji Joe. Oh yeah, Poji Joe, the insane powerhouse of comedy entertainment. Right. I don't know how they would even survive without you. They might <laughs> fall apart. Yeah, once I threatened to leave, and they they doubled my salary. I was making $5 million a year, and they, they gave me $25 million that's a year. That's not doubling it. Yeah, that's totally doubling, yeah. That's not doubling it. Yeah. That's not doubling. Okay, that's actually... Not, Joe, do math. Yeah, let me redo the math. It was I was making $3 million a year, and they doubled <laughs> it to $4 million? Or maybe it was four million to ten million. I don't know. It was it was definitely doubled though. <laughs> anyway, does that so. mean you're gonna buy me melt? <laughs> yes, please. Oh, I think that means Joe's already, buying us melt, oh, Brian. I, know. Woo! I technically melt, bought melt. Brian he did melt buy for me Christmas. Melt. What about me though? Card. And I'm buying him <laughs> other things. What about and me? And was like, I did not get it. I didn't card. get melt. <laughs> I want tofu wings. Oh, my stomach just... Well, they have, tofu they have, they have barbecue tofu uh, wings. They're so good. Do they have milk in D.C.? I don't think no, so. I don't, I don't think so. Oh. I think it was a, a relatively local thing. Yeah, it is local. Wait, I'll look it up. I but not right now. <laughs> I'm going to text my roommate to buy me milk. Oh, that sounds so good. I wish we could all three of us just go out. Can we record milk. a podcast at milk? <laughs> That'd be fun. For I mean, people who don't know, the melt bills. is a relatively local thing. It's where an they Ohio make thing. Grilled cheese, gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches, as big as your head. They're not that big anymore. They made them smaller. What? They made the sandwiches smaller, and they don't give you. What about the challenge? I I've never done it. You can't do that vegan. But they do have vegan and vegetarian options. They have lots of vegan options. Oh, but they're, they're like so. So good. if you live in Lakewood, they're kind of like. You know how when you eat too much Chipotle, you get sick of Chipotle and you don't ever want to eat it again? Uh -huh. That's what happened with Melt. Oh, no. So I, I kind of hate it, but also I want tofu wings <laughs> so bad right now. I haven't gotten the Melt in ages. I think I went... I tried to order Melt the other night and for, through Uber Eats because you get free money mm -hmm. the first time you order. And uh, they canceled my order because Melt was about to close. Uh, it's tragic. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to check out more episodes, you can check us out on iTunes. If you want to check out Mel, you can check out, <laughs> you can check out the Mel if you're ever in Ohio. Uh, you can go to SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash CYN podcast. Or on a lot of your favorite uh, podcasting apps. I don't know if you guys have a podcasting app, but I use Pod, uh, what is it called? PodTrack, I think it's called. Oh, wait, never mind. No, PodTrack is what I use to track our iTunes statistics. That's not right at all. That's different. But Podbean. Podbean is the one that I use. Uh, and we're definitely Bean. on Podbean. Because I always get a notification. A little can you not notification every time I post a new episode. Um, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. All the links are in the show notes if you can't find any of those. Um, what have we learned today, pals? People like court. But I don't like court. <laughs> but it, that, that simply, that's what I like. Um, I learned. Oh, are we going out of order? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I was, I was. Everyone was looking at me, so I thought, oh, it's got to be one of those cases. You started where I talking. Next. So <laughs> sorry, you go next. Oh, I learned never to let Joe design a penthouse. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be awful. There's going. There's gonna be so many bathrooms. I learned that. Netflix is going to take over the world. Mm. <laughs> that was another big deal, too, when Netflix started winning Emmys. Yeah. That was a big We're deal. We're just like, it's so good. <laughs> it's awesome. I also, want it to come back. Also, is it not coming back? No, it's, I'm just waiting for the new oh. season. I was like, what? I'm waiting for Rick and Morty to come back. I'm waiting I for Halloween, do... Stranger Things, uh, oh my yes. gosh. And Better Call Saul is mm. coming back next month, I think. Mm. I'm so excited for that. Better Call Saul is really good. Better Call Saul, uh... It's hard to watch it though. Like, on, no, I mean, like, you yeah, can't. You it's hard to, to find, find it. it. Yeah. Also, shout out Walking Dead. I need that to be on Netflix now because I am not caught up. And for people who don't agree with Brian, can you not? Can you never, ever? For people who actually say penthouse, don't.
in other news, this is really exciting. Jesse and I went on a road trip with Justin Trudeau in my dreams last night. What? <laughs> Where did you go? I don't know, but it was. Why wasn't I invited? invited. I, I don't know. You can come in real life. It was just okay. stages of wokeness. Or not that 